RFA was done in liver and kidney before, you know, thyroid was kind of developed. The specific probes that you mentioned, the thyroid in the neck and all of the anatomy here is so small in comparison to the liver that, and, and there's also so many critical structures in the neck that physicians who do RFA or other ablative techniques have to be very aware of and very mindful of during the procedure. And so the safety element you mentioned is so important for the physicians as they're learning all of that. So perhaps that might be part of the common concerns or even skepticism in the surgical community. What would you say about that? Yeah, I think for sure that goes back to the safety profile of this. Um, with the liver, there's a lot of um, room for that energy to spread around without damaging structures that are adjacent to the liver. And with the thyroid, that's not the case. The thyroid is, as you already mentioned, um, sitting right up against several very important anatomic structures. And so you can't have the energy spreading out of the thyroid into these surrounding structures, which is really the biggest question about the safety regarding use of RFA, which now we know it is safe, of course. But at the time, when you're talking about why did it not come to the U.S. sooner, these safety type issues related to the anatomy of the thyroid was probably one of the bigger barriers. And so how do you approach the conversations with your surgical peers about this and really kind of convince them that this really is safe, especially when it's done properly and when you've got this really strong command of ultrasound and the anatomy in the neck? Once a surgeon is into practice, their skill set, you know, a surgeon in practice, their skill set has been formed through years and maybe even a decade of really hard training. It's not until you've been into practice for two or three years that you really start to, start to hit your independent stride. And that's just because the human body is incredibly complex. Surgery is incredibly difficult. And so, you know, you're looking at trying to get folks who've already spent 10 years acquiring a skill set to now go down another learning curve and bring these other techniques into their armamentarium. Now, fortunately, surgeons have good hands, right? <laughs> and so, and so, and most experienced thyroid surgeons will already have a background in FNA and in thyroid ultrasound. So then we just have to put those two together. And, um, you know, the learning curve for RFA is probably not quite as steep for a surgeon um, as it would be for somebody with a different background. 